I want to thank all of you that took to Twitter to submit your questions for this week's Q&A video. This is probably going to get broken up into two parts because I think i got enough questions to do that. I want to make sure I get through as many questions as possible. If you want to submit your questions for future Q&As, make sure you follow the show on Twitter. At Otero Central is the Twitter handle. And while you're at it, if you're the first time ever checking out one of these Q&A videos and you haven't done so already, make sure you smash the subscribe button. Do it right now! Hashtag subscribe or die! Yeah, we're bringing that back. All right, let's go ahead and get started. You're supposed to be wrestling questions. And I see our first one deviated from the script. At MC17 Clark, what was your first date like? Please explain in detail. Uh, no. No, I don't think I will. And I will tell you admittedly, I remember more <laughs> between the ages. <laughs> no, no, I don't think I will. I can remember. I honestly, I don't really remember truly what my first date was. I remember getting stood up more as a teenage sluggy than anything. <laughs> I remember those types of experiences. Yeah, I'm waiting for somebody. And you bought like flowers and shit and you're sitting there waiting for an hour, hour and a half and you, it dawns on you. Oh, this bitch ain't showing up either. <laughs> I remember those details more than I do anything else. <laughs> it's even worse when it's their idea and they're the ones that ask you and then you show up and they don't. <laughs> so, my first date, I can't even remember. I also got to remember, I'll be 40 in March, yeah, so. Yeah, and I don't remember some of those things so vividly anymore. I'm sorry. Uh, at center of 51190, how much of a waste is it that WWE is blowing off a program between Brian and Reigns when it's clear Roman will win because he isn't dropping the belt before or after Mania? The story between them is solid enough for SummerSlam or Survivor Series, not a throwaway B-level pay-per-view. Uh, you know, I talked about it even in the build-up to the Royal Rumble is that, hey, you know, there's a story there. So you could make it work, but it's not, it's not Edge and Roman. Um, let's be clear. Um, you know, I'm actually kind of inclined to agree with you a little bit on this one. Like, I'd rather not fill time here with Daniel Bryan for the fuck all of it. You could use him as a future opponent going into the spring and summer. I, I don't see where the problem with that is. Like, I would rather see that. So I'm actually, ironically enough, believe it or not, I'm kind of agreeing with you. It seems like an unnecessary waste of time. Uh, at Dalek of Chaos asks, let's say WCW didn't go out of business after the AOL Time Warner more merger, nor did Vince McMahon buy them out. Which wrestlers do you think would have become main eventers? And see, I thought your question was going in one direction, and then it went over into another. Um... I certainly think Booker T would have been one of their top guys for the future. Like, I'm trying to think back now, 2001. Um, I certainly think he would have been. If they tried to force Billy Kidman. <laughs> um, maybe at some point it would have been Ray. I certainly think that company, you know, like Booker might have had a chance to be their top guy. But maybe Sting would have still been there those first couple of years. So the talent cover wouldn't have been entirely bare. Uh, at Andreas underscore Byron, what are your feelings on ODB? Do you think she would have been a star in the Attitude Era? Uh, nah, because her being kind of raunchy would have been kind of tame in the Attitude Era, admittedly. Um, so I don't think she would have. She was cool back in the TNA days. I didn't have any problem with her. She's a thick ass. Uh, <laughs> Joseph Moran asks, is WWE building Apollo Crews to be that next great heel and who does he remind you of? I don't care who he reminds me of right now. Uh, next great heel, I don't know about that. Um, but building him up, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm cool that they're deciding to try and do something with him. We'll see how it ultimately works. Um... That C Peasy loves you. Dak Prescott and Psycho Sid walk into a bar. What happens? <laughs> Does the bar's name Rice Krispies? 
<laughs> Snap, crackle, pop. <laughs> they tumble down. <laughs> At Splashboro Kieran, somehow Kieran, you never asked me questions about the uh, location or whereabouts of Ray Lewis's bloody white suit, but you've always got some Memphis mid-card piece of crap related question. Why do you do this to me? He does ask though, why do you think so many internet fans who crap on Cena's decade of doom and Triple H's reign of terror let that founder's TNA reign of terror off the hook? Especially considering Cena and Triple H drew money and were stars. Um, because not nearly as many people watch TNA. And a lot of those TNA bots back in the day were idiots! There are plenty of people that raged against it though, just like they did with the, the Reign of Terror and the Decade of Doom, but... Oh. Uh, you have one hero that really helps shine the light on it. I'm not pointing any, I'm pointing at a finger here. That mid-card piece of crap. 10,000 guitars broken, zero dimes drawn. Fuck you, Eric. Um, at MJ Make a Podcast. What is, why, come on, let's try again. What is your favorite sitcom and why is it Married with Children? Because it is my favorite sitcom. Because Al Bundy is a representation of many things. You know, not all of them necessarily age very well. Uh, but the show is just flat out fucking funny and hilarious and at its, in its time was so incredibly different to most anything that you got. Um, you know, like it was a different version of All in the Family in a lot of ways. You know, Ed O'Neill as Al Bundy was just fantastic. The National Organization of Men Against Amazonian Masterhood. No ma'am! <laughs> his Dodge with his original gas, original oil. <laughs> yeah, married with children. One of those all-time great sitcoms and certainly my personal favorite of all time. Uh, at Son Goshuaku, what's your ranking of these three classic Stone Cold Rescue moments? Austin, stay, say, Austin saves Stephanie from the Ministry. Austin saves The Rock from the McMahon-Helmsley regime. Austin saves WWF from the Alliance on Raw. Uh, the Alliance 3 because the Alliance is stupid, so... Fuck that. Oh, he's cussing! JR, good old JR. He's cussing! He's fussing! It's the old Stone Cold! Number two is Austin saving Stephanie from the ministry, and number one is Backlash 2000. Yeah. Uh, at Mr. Underscore Jinx05, would you be interested in seeing a Survivor Series traditional four on four elimination match between the Breakfast Club and the. No! No! Hell no! With the elite. Oh my god. 150 hail hunters. For that blasphemy. At Nebuk Sid asks, What would it take for there to be a 15 reasons why <laughs> Fuck Dolph Ziggler sucks? And how hard would it be to limit yourself to just 15? Woo! The challenge would not be coming up with 15. The challenge indeed would be narrowing it down to 15 and getting the 15 absolute worst because you get so many varying levels of suck with that piece of crap that it's truly hard to differentiate from one to another. I've never done a 15 reasons he sucks video. I think it's just, if anything, proves how irrelevant he's been over the years. I have thought I done had done one a long time ago or recently. Really? Never? Oh, we're going to have to rectify that. Y'all got to remind me of that in due time because we need one of those. We got to have one of those. Am I right? Let me know in the comments if you agree you want to see one of those 15 Reasons videos on that twisty-wearing piece of crap. Uh, Killlink underscore Mukahid. What do you think of Karrion Cross? Can he become a significant star on the main roster? I mean, he's absolutely eloquent and educated, looks like a threat, and he could work in the ring. I personally see a lot of potential in him. I see plenty of potential in him, too. Um, I think he could become a significant star in the main roster. Like, he's one of those guys that you look at. You know, I've said it with, like, Damian Priest, is that you should be building him up to be a potential future big four pay-per-view opponent for 
Roman. And if you want to to make Drew feel okay about himself, you do it with Drew too. But absolutely building him up for Roman. I look at Karrion Cross and I see a similar type of thing. Like, that's the focus. You should be getting him the ready to get the hell away from NXT so he can play in the big boys pool and he can he can feud with those guys. Uh, at Surgeon D, been watching some classic Nitro and I don't think guys like Ray were simply at the right place in time. Those cruiserweight matches and even peak X Division stuff had logic to them, unlike today's spot fest thoughts. Um, some of them did, some of them did not. But at the time... It worked okay, even if they were just lucha, highly choreographed looking spot fest, because they were different. Like, you didn't have a show full of them. You didn't have every single wrestler looking just like them. You didn't have every single match working just like them. So they, I think they actually stood out more because of it. Again, it's about variety. It's about uniqueness. It's about being different. You know, too much of any one thing, whether it's steroid guys or flippers, is no damn good. At least with the steroid guys, and they if they can talk, at least you could say they're larger in life and they got personality. When everybody flips, like, nobody makes big fucking money. Um, at Demarcus Flowers, what's your view on AEW over the past few months? Not great. You'll have some highlights and you have some good things mixed in. Uh, but you got a bunch of marks writing a show every week, and they don't know what the hell they're doing. From a storytelling standpoint, from a, you know, Developing character standpoint, nuances, you know, this in general, it's really bad. Folks should admit it's really bad. You might still like it, but it, it, it does not make you a bad fan to say that their storytelling and their writing and the way they piece together a lot of their shows is really poorly done. And it certainly has been recently. Um, let's see here. At George, 1847, 7530. Man, you sure hitting the... Uh, the characters there on your Twitter handle. Should WWE book Jeff Hardy better? Uh, he said, I host pay-per-view parties at my house for friends. I grew up watching wrestling, but don't anymore. And all seven of them, their favorite's Jeff Hardy. And they get mad every time he loses. Their age is between 20 to 25. Is WWE wasting his talent? I think so. You know, there could be something to be said that they don't want to do too much with him because they don't know how much they can count on him. But the reality is, if you got Jeff Hardy and you're paying him, you would like to make him a little bit of a bigger deal than what you actually do. I'm, I'm just saying. Uh, at James Isabel 20, would you rather have the Invisible Man beat Kenny Omega for the AEW title and say hell is fake? <laughs> or <laughs> I'm not reading your second part. You, you deserve a cock kick for that one. That Twisty would beat Roman and then cut a promo talking about how great he is. How dare you, sir? How dare you? But that first one? Man, would I be fucking riveted. The Invisible Man comes back and then he grabs the mic and it's sitting there floating in air. Nothing holding it up. And he says, he forgot the tap. Hell is fake. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. At Rockstar Tay, let's go close out. I think this one we're gonna do two. Uh, if by some chance a number one babyface in professional wrestling, our head of the table, our tribal chief Roman Reigns, does wrestle The Rock at Mania in Hollywood, will The Rock finally be exposed as the heel he truly is? Yes, yes he will. Yes he will. Bring it on, Rock. Oh, excuse me. As you would say, just bring it. The only reason he's waiting until Hollywood is because he's scared now. That's the truth. Nothing else. Pandemic my ass. He's scared. He's running scared. So you know this head of the table will whoop that ass. Send him back to Hollywood permanently. Yeah. All right. Well, that's all I got um, for this one. I'll put up another Q&A video here in a couple of hours closely behind this so make sure you check out that one too and i'll answer more of these questions you guys sent in this week thanks for sending these these were fun let's do this again in a little bit and we're gonna all right